Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. And we want to thank our newest patron. We want to say a huge thank you to Miss Julie. She's our latest and greatest and is helping us on Patreon. Thank you, Julie. Absolutely. And we couldn't do it without you guys, everybody. Uh, please do. Even if you are on uh, Patreon and you still want to make sure that you uh, have access to playlists. Because, uh, unfortunately, you know, at this point in time, we haven't sorted Patreon out into playlists. Uh, we really can't keep up with everything. <laughs> Honestly, we're trying to do our best as everybody to get as prepared as possible. But there are different playlists if you want to go binge watching on the Evolutionary EE Arts and Hearts Home. Uh, everything goes up on Patreon again in one place. And you can support us over there for as little as a dollar a month or save 10%. If you pay a full year in advance, it's $10.80, which is like 2.8 something cents per day. Okay, so our sister Tammy uh, was like, did you see this new ad? As you see the title, uh, 45 broke the internet with this new ad. I, I just, instead of playing the whole thing again, um, just because the way that the system is, it's like you play something and then all of a sudden they won't let you, you know, play your video in the U.S. or the U.K. or, or some weird place or you just never know when you play things because we've done long videos. They felt great. And then all of a sudden they're blocked or they're taken down. So um, one way to circumvent this is to kind of highlight and show you um, by kind of doing it this way. More than a country. This is Trump's new ad, which plays on, again, patriotism. Here you go. This is, you know, again, symbolic uh, for the all-American, uh, you know, or what we would view as an all-American uh, ideal. You got like a farmer. I mean, it looks like a farmer in Kansas or Nebraska looking up at the sun behind the flag, old glory wavering. He's got his hand on his heart because he's patriotic. And it's all about restoration, restoring what was. You know, we're going to take a look at a historical aspect, but my dear wife is tapping me. Well, I, I just want to kind of explain and, and look a little bit deeper on the word restore. You know, what does restore mean? What does that mean? It, it means to to make new again, to make something as it originally was. So, I mean, that's that's a noble thing. Restoration is good, but we'll, we'll keep going here. Well... And then again, it's restoration, but is that looking through rose-colored glasses? Because when we look deeper, often what we're sold is not the reality. It's what we were sold. And humanity has been sold time and time again. Things that just, they don't come out the way that we are, are told they're going to come out. And honestly, when you see ads like this, what follows? Oh my God, what follows is catastrophe. What, what follows is uh, tragedy, um, bloodshed like uh, of an unimaginable level. So again, you start out with the farmer, you know, and, and America, you know, that ideal, you know, the sun blazing. Look at the sun blazing. And again, feels like, uh, Kansas feels like Nebraska, but it could be so many different places across America. Uh oh, storm, a storm cloud. Uh, the storm has gathered. Here is the darkness. And, and again, this is so much like any story, any story, you know, and, and we've talked about how if you really looked at it closely, 45, you know, did his stint as the boss. He did a bunch of uh, a sh of episodes with the WWE, WWF um, coming out and actually taking part. And even at one point in time, attacking Vince McMahon, you know, pseudo attacking again. It's all sales. It's all acting. You got to be emotionally tied to it. So they got to get you. And they got to portray one side as a good side, one side as the bad side. The reality is, what well, if they're both uh, just nothing but dark clouds? Mm -hmm. 
I know, and, and when I saw this, this reminds me of a um, a photograph that was taken with uh, President Trump and his wife and many other people in his cabinet, and everything was very, very quiet for a moment. It's like this was totally set up for, for ma mainstream consumption, and the only words that were spoken was, this is the calm before the storm. So, and this was some, some years ago, but this has been going on for a while. And now he has this commercial, a storm has gathered. So, you know, he's, this has been going on for years. Oh, it goes on as long as you can, you know, imagine this, you know, again, this is something that's been used from time immemorial. It's what the system does. Notice on the right hand side. Now that could be you know, Washington, D.C., you know, uh, what building are they representing there? But it could be Rome. Rome it could be Greece. Rome, yeah. Because when we look to D.C. and we look to, you know, again, Washington, D.C. is its own entity. So is London. So is, uh, you know, the Vatican. They are their own entities. And, and there's purpose behind that. And we've done individual videos talking about that. Others have as well. Ooh, this is the system. Again, you know, when we look to the Greco-Roman gods, they really are, again, it's the system that goes back to Sumeria, Akkadia, goes back to Babylon. It's all the one same system. And you look, the tidal waves are lashing against, is that our capital building or is it Rome or is it, you know, again, it, it's a representation that, that they're, they're, they're hitting our DNA. Uh, they're hitting our memory in more ways than one. Uh-oh, uh-oh, flag is burning. Flag is burning. The city looks dark. Gotham is on fire. Um, ooh, this is some scary, ominous stuff. And what do we have going on? You know, police in riot gear and guns drawn. And, you know, again, the chaos that is upon us. I mean, we've had nonstop chaos the last seven years, pretty much. You know, again, it goes back to... 2017 and and the first eclipse now we're coming to the culmination we are coming to the culmination of of one time and it's going to be fiery this is a good representation of that and you know again this this almost feels like a blending of art with an actual photo um and it could be anywhere you know this could be anywhere this could be be anywhere because it's going to be kind of everywhere if the timeline continues um and i do want to share that uh, one of the things that's been hitting me is i and i think the next video we do after this we'll touch on this as we've split um we've split so much information i'm gonna have to split it into little little smaller doses as you see this masked person you know again um I, I do feel there's a pushback. I, I feel that the timelines are, are being, are wavering. Um, they're wavering right now. You know, again, nothing is set in stone. And this is what I want to get across. I saw one comment on yesterday's evolutionary video um, that was just saying, because uh, we were talking about how, uh, why would anybody choose to come in into this chaos? at this point in time and one person said i didn't choose my parents had sex and there i am and you know it, what hits me is like do people really still think this way um i guess they do because to me it's so obvious that the soul is pre-existent um and it's something that i have i, I have zero doubts in I, zero because i remember uh past life more than one past life and other people do as well and we've actually done videos again showing uh people and little kids that have memories of things there's no way they could have memories of them and and this is common we we've all for the most part uh, it would be the rare person is one that this is their first incarnation most of us have had many many lives the body is just a vehicle but it's a tool we use to explore in this density it does have its advantages it does have its disadvantages well, I, I kind of see it as, you know, to someone who is first waking up and the idea of a choice 
is a difficult one because it's not exactly a conscious choice. You weren't born with a piece of paper in your hand that's going to say, okay, you're going to endure this. You're going to go through that and this and this and this and that. It's, it's one where things happen in your life and you're able to finally come to the conclusion that this is growth, uh, that we have more than one life that we live life after life. So it's something to me, it's more of a development of the pineal gland so you can see beyond what is in the 3D. But I, I do think sometimes it definitely takes people a while when, if something horrible happens in their life to sit down and, and, and actually accept that this really horrible thing happened. Now, it does take time and over time, uh, information unfolds in your life so you can see why did this really awful thing have to happen and it's definitely not an easy thing to do but it does come with soul growth and it is yes we do make these choices but it's not at a fully conscious level no absolutely not and so this looks like signs of chaos with the hair uh, the way he has it spiked up in blue, it feels like they're trying to symbolize anarchy. It looks kind of like there's an anarchy symbol. Um, and again, you know, we've been introduced to anarchy in the form of Antifa as well as others. You know, again, this is just so clear. What are they doing here as there's also it feels like the flag is back there in the background. Of course, we the people burning, you know, this is so dramatic. They seek to erase everything that was the U.S. Look at the colors in the back, red, white, and blue. You know, a man in love with a woman that have kids. You know, the normal way of doing things that we've all were kind of brought up with uh, again. And now we see that attack, which, you know, again, this was all said and laid out. Um, I think his name was, was it Yuri Bezmenov? I want to say the, the uh, Soviet... Uh, defector from way way back in uh, the 80s that that talked about the moral decay that was going to be uh, infiltrated into society which is so obvious that we can see uh, and people doing shadowy deals in the backgrounds plotting out controlling things while the masses think they have power but they don't have power and even going down the very, very uh, dark side that has been exposed because, you know, the darkest conspiracy theories that you can imagine are, are being proven out in this time. And it's 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 far more darker than most people would have ever really suspected besides those that had that just inner knowing that it always was this way. So here you see a little bit of light and a lot of darkness and this is what's facing us. And then he gives a little clearer um, <clears throat> depiction of, of part of what's going on uh, in society as you see a depiction uh, in the back this almost looks like it it could be some sort of communist flag uh, I don't know if they're trying to depict um, Karl Marx probably in the back there I would say I think it's Karl Marx you know and you see our children yes uh, you know again What's going on is as as dark as dark can get. So it seems like it's all very, very black and white. Very, very black and white. Wait a minute. What are they trying to tell us here? As you see the country and you see what looks like an impact. Uh, this, this either looks like it's a EMP or this is some sort of strike. But we also see, you know, lights. But are these fires? You know, are these fires or are these lights? You know. There's so much here. There is so much here in this new ad. And we're all going to be watching. We're all going to be glued. And, you know, here we are. It's March 4th, 2024. Wow. 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 You know, it really is go time. Yet at the same time, I keep getting these feelings like things could be pushed off. Like the timelines can really be changed because I think we are waking up faster than they intended um they they want us to go sleepwalking off the cliff but it's picking up that bigger picture of what truly is right and wrong again you have the flag right there how many people have a flag in their home i don't know you know uh i think my 
parents, I, I know, especially my mom, my dad was really close-lipped. My mom would say she was very patriotic, extremely patriotic. I mean, she was a, a Navy brat, and that's, that's you know, she grew up with a, a Navy family. That's, you know, she watched her dad go off and, and her, her older brother go off to, uh, and serve in the military all their lives. You know, that was what they did, and they were always in the, Na- you know, it was always a Navy thing in our, our family. And also in in past life for me as well, um, at least one of them that I have a clear recollection of. Look at this. You see the flag going here. They're scaling the walls. This is just so symbolic. Well, there is so much rubble here too. I mean, it looks like some place that's just been destroyed. And where are these people going? What are they doing? To me, it kind of screams uh, like something like 9-11 just happened here and and there's a flag and people are coming to take a look at the rubble so we have to look at these things and the other scene where the people were watching tv and the anchors are on tv it looked like there was very clear uh, like a- ai is running the show when it comes to what they're looking at on the tv um, I, I didn't see any dates or anything on there, but I'm sure, you know, someone who has a sharp eye and a quick eye, there will there will be dates and there'll be probably some uh, good ideas as to when and how things are going to come about uh, further deeper into this. Yeah, this, um, you know, as I'm feeling the energies, um, <laughs> we... We still have a video I promised to do tearing apart David Bowie's song that took me a month to get out of my head. Um, you know, the Black Star song, which is really, it's one of the most telling music videos you'll ever see and very, very dark. Oh, we hear the thunder. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's right here. We heard the thunder. Again, look at this. Is this D.C. or is it Rome? Is it Greece? Well, Rome fell, right? everything just transmutes it's still the system yet the system itself fights itself all day long Uh, again if you really take the leadership of this world and you recognize that who gets promoted in this world it's those that are self-serving uh, yeah, they will absolutely be uh, tearing each other apart limb from limb in order to just put themselves up as the top puppet. And, you know, this feels like so many um, destruction videos where all of a sudden things start blowing up behind you and people are trying to escape from the cities. It's just chaos. It, it just is very, very ominous and it's supposed to be that way. And here we are. We're just playing our video games because, you know, again, sleep now, sleep. Ever see Dark City with the aliens? Sleep. And yeah, then they'd re- rearrange people and do it all over again. Uh, great movie. That was kind of like The Matrix before The Matrix in so many ways. And here you have uh, a woman looking kind of hopefully, uh, but at the same time maybe distressed and looking at the chaos that's unfurling and maybe wondering if, you know, I don't know, has somebody gone off to war? Is, is Are they going to come back? Or is work coming to us? You know, it's it's definitely uh, a, an ad that's all about pulling us in. Pulling us in. Look at the chaos in our streets. And I was looking at a video from Dublin, Ireland. And, and it looks like San Francisco or Seattle or, you know, it's not just here. This this is, uh, it's it's... It's the falling apart of Rome, the decadence of Rome on the global scale. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really... At least the NATO scale, I should say. Right, at least the NATO scale. I mean, this is something that it's within all of our bigger cities, that scene where people are just standing around in garbage. And it, it's it's in a place where it's at the, at the buildup right now, but it's starting to become commonplace where people are homeless. They simply cannot afford to get anywhere with anything or there's, you know, people have really been faced with a lot of drug addictions, with a lot of challenges in life, with a lot of trauma, and they don't have anywhere to go. They're just functionally, they're not okay. So they're building up in the cities 
And I, I think it's it's part of making that normal and degrading us to such a degree where we're supposedly going to be happy when there's a so-called savior. And here's Big Brother just staring at you everywhere you go. Boy, if you're in Times Square or if you're in Tokyo or, you know, any of these you know big cities, this is what you see. And and. Big Brother is everywhere, obviously. So we, you know, making note of this, and everybody is fixated. Everybody is fixated, and this feels like bio um, yeah, identification. Identification for sure. This definitely feels like the bio identification. It's coming right around the corner, not far away. And you know, you're going to look at a screen, and they're going to give your whole background, your whole history, and you're not going to be able to go anywhere without. Um, everyone and everything that's in control knowing that transaction denied yeah exactly and let's go back there again you know again more of the same the disaster absolute power and yeah absolute power corrupts absolute power always corrupts you know but what we've had is an illusion it's been an illusion the whole time and and this is part of what people might not recognize or I mean what's going on up here is this uh, a war in the heavens you can see figures you can see outstretched arms you know you can see the red white and blue with kind of yellow and orange uh, hints and everything it does feel like a war in the heavens going on and then here you go bomb blast this is pretty clear you know destruction of the US bomb blasts chaos it's also so close so close the timing the timing now he says that is not our fate not our fate as you see the flags waving because there's somebody here to lead you and yeah there's going to be a ton of people that buy and soul invictus right Sol Invictus, Constantine the Great, you know, sir, he was a devotee of, of the conquering son until he had a vision and decided, you know, I'm going to conquer under the other son, the son of God, and created the cross. And no, that was all given to him. You know, again, that's part of the script. It's all part of the script, as you see here, you know. A lot of secret service there it looks like you know there's the flags and and there's the you know the leader to be the leader that was the resurrection ah lady liberty yeah lady liberty but was it liberty for the indigenous people that were here this is just another cycle this is just another cycle again going to those things that we might revere in our past like lincoln and you know there you go oh mount rushmore but how about the original mount rushmore which was not the american presidents and maybe people don't know that that these these rocks were sacred they were sacred and they were carved over by again the europeans that came over mm -hmm. i think that's one of the saddest things to know and understand that the sacred quality of these stones I mean, is that not a spit in the face, a slap in the face? Is that not one of the most horrific things anyone could do is put your conquerors there so they're looking at you as your tribes and your family lineage dwindle away? Well, this is what the system does. It, it wipes out what was there and puts something up in place that, and then tells people that was always there. And, and then they they glorify it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, the obelisk. <laughs> Uh, what was Stanley Kubrick trying to tell us in 2001 and 2010? And, you know, again, the obelisk that you see in D.C., and, and we will see them in other points around the world. Uh, and people are lining up. Yeah, you know, you can see. Make America great again. And that's always hit me. That word great, right? It, it, it's just always hit me. Babylon the Great, make America great. This is all, again, fulfilling their own prophecy is what is being done. And Billy Carson, uh, he did like a long, uh, a long one on uh, exactly what's going on. And we, we don't 
agree on like all the minute details with with Billy, but the the greater part um, there is agreement on um, the big chunk. You know, maybe seventy percent, seventy five percent. And you know, again, you have people that believe in fairy tales, and they are fairy tales. But then you know, the, <laughs> the one of the funniest things is you know, fairies actually do exist in more ways than one. Uh, and yet we're told other stories that are taken, you know, so literally and so true, and they couldn't be farther from the truth. They're, they're distortions. Here you have a flood. Oh, holding back the flood, holding back the flood. Here we go again as, you know, Allison changed back into the flood again. Same old trip as it was back then. Mm-hmm. I know, and I'm looking at this and, you know, they're showing people working really hard and they're working hard and Trump is, you know, like he's working with them. And to me, it just reminds me of a video we did a while back from our dear sister Kate gave us the idea, but it had everything to do with slavery and how that is justified and how it gets everybody to work for the plantation owner. And then everyone's taking pride in that. I just, I can't, I can't remember the name of the video, but it was a very good video. This is what this reminds me of. Yeah, again, you know, it was selling them on, hey, I'm going to free you all, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? How are you going to survive? How are you going to feed yourselves? Where, where are you going to you know, build a house? How are you going to build a house? You have no money. You have no nothing. You were slaves. So, you know, hey, you, you could be part owner in this plantation. And, and again, nothing ever changes. And that's exactly what they did with, with us. There was a time when we were <clears throat> told we were slaves. And then there was a time when they, the real controllers disappeared from open control and let the slaves apparently run the show. Here you are, you know, don't worry. We're going to make America great again. Everybody is happy and joyous. And once again, men and women can, you know, dance, sing, have kids. Well, actually, fertility rates are dropping like, yeah, you know, um, yeah, when you when you look at it, maybe the have kids thing won't won't work out uh, after all. So you know it goes on, and there you go, the conquering uh, hero again. This is so reminiscent of everything that we've seen in preceding ages, and there they are planting the flag back in uh, the Nebraska cornfield or Kansas, etc. You know and. Here you go, you know, happily ever after. But then again, war, war, selling us on war. Vote, vote, register to vote. You know, because again, it, it, when you vote, you're acknowledging the system. You're giving the system credence, you know. And who's really looking at the numbers after all? Who's really looking at, and this was courtesy of Look and Live um, on YouTube. I'll give you guys the uh, the link, of course. Who's really looking at the numbers in the bigger scheme of things? When when I see that, it reminds me a lot of this, the vision of George Washington at Valley Forge, which, did he have a real vision? I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe not, probably not. I think it's just part of the script, really. Uh, that, that's what I really feel. And we've done a lot of vid- uh, videos on it. Now, Valley Forge was a key time you know look like they were going to be defeated cold winter you know people are out in the snow no no shoes on holes you know in their shoes and bare skin frostbite you know doesn't look good all this you know then they come back and they win freedom yeah when we look to the propaganda posters what do you see this is the soviet union there you go you know again saluting the flag this is we are indoctrinated into whatever system uh, is in place in the country in which we are born. It's just a given that you're going to be indoctrinated into thinking that, you know, hey, the Soviet Union was the best thing ever. Hey, the United States was the best thing ever, you know, or maybe it was Nazi Germany. It, it's again, when you look at it, look at the artwork, look at the vibe. Go back and think about that YouTube video, especially when, you know, it first opened up. And the first scenes, you know, of of what are we looking at? We're looking at the motherland. We're looking at, 
you know, again, the the flag is is wavering in uh, Kansas, Nebraska cornfield. It, it's it's all the same propaganda they give us time after time. They'll sell us on a new idea. Oh, you know, it's it's Lenin, you know, in 1917, or, or maybe it's you know Mao for the for the Chinese Communist um, Party. Again, they always they gotta give you something to hope uh, for, and whenever it comes from bloodshed, the karma's going into more bloodshed. You know, again like creates like how are we going to escape the system it, it's well really it, it's we got to just refuse to fight each other uh, the problem is the control system the problem is the leadership workers of the world unite you have nothing to lose but your chains or your life and the life of your your kids and your family uh, and you know maybe things get worse because they have gotten worse a father should be proud. Um, yeah, you know, again, they've used pride in everything and anything you can think about in order to, you know, appeal to the ego and provoke an emotional response. All these different countries of the world doesn't matter what ideology because, you know, ultimately they replaced the czars in Russia with communism and it was just as oppressive if not worse and meanwhile in that transition period tens of millions died this is cuba this is castro so yeah yeah you gotta defend the homeland sometimes it's necessary this is from korea tearing apart an american flag because again if you're in north korea uh obviously we are the bad guys and again, this is Mao in China and, you know, Shea uh, Guerrera. Again, it's just the same thing over and over. Deutschland, yes, you know, again, for the Fuhrer and the Volk and the, and the people. You know, again, you're fighting for the people. You're, uh, you know, you're grand, aggrandizing these beings that are truly, honestly, demonic. Uh, certainly, we can all agree on this one most of us there might be one lone person out there here he's he's riding on a black horse uh -huh. he's got his armor on like a knight you know when you look at these again if you grew up in world war ii in germany you would be patriotic probably most if you have a patriotic inclination now you probably would then and what would history tell us and then they always look for scapegoats and then the scapegoats become the oppressors. That's a big part of it. That's a huge part of it. You know, again, propaganda. Propaganda. How do you get to people? You get to them by their ego. You build them up. You should be proud. You're born in the greatest country in the world. They're the bad guys. Go get them. And this is exactly what happens time and time again, appealing emotionally, dragging you in emotionally. Oh, we can do it together. Just go kill those guys. That's insanity. Let us go forward together. Yeah, killing other people that are being drafted by, again, uh, fat, very, very um, luxurious living politicians that are not getting shot at themselves but some poor farm boy from you know poland or germany or russia or wherever it is is going to be shot at by some other poor little farm boy this is what they do it's as long as we kill each other and you know hey you know, might as well let the ladies contribute too right this is what they do. are you a girl with a star spangled heart uh, do you have any brain cells that's what they should really be asking because if you don't we could convince you to do things that you wouldn't normally do uh, And again, it doesn't matter the country look to Vietnam Vietnam's communist now But you know if you look at the slaughter that that happened in Vietnam, it was it was brutal It was brutal warfare and and yet I still think that the vast majority of people around the world the vast vast majority just simply want peace they want to be able to live what we would consider a normal, healthy, happy life. 
and just pursue the things that that you know they're inclined to pursue. The problem is that the power structure is inclined to pursue absolute control. And you know, again, Vietnam was one of those wars that a lot of people started to wake up. A lot of people started to think this really feels like uh, I'm just not buying it. There's something that is that we're not buying at this point in time. And what did the control system do with the consciousness revolution that really did start? It probably actually started way back in the 1800s. I, I think probably in the 1870s, 1880s. But then we look to the 1960s. They introduced all sorts of uh, mind-altering substances. And even though you know some substances were illegal, they were still in common use. And other ones that are uh, legal, you know, will have the same effect anyway. They they want to use anything they can to keep us under their control. Americans will always fight for liberty. No other country, just America. Well, maybe some of our allies' countries. Y yeah, well, tell that to the Native Americans, a hundred million that probably lost their lives uh, in the takeover by the Europeans. It, you know, th there's different estimates on that. And the Trail of Tears, you know, again, kicking people off their land because they were here. You know, again, Columbus didn't discover anything but an opportunity uh, to basically enslave another group of people and steal their resources. By persuasion and force, they have been made to retire from river to river, from mountain to mountain, until some of the tribes have become extinct. Others have left but remnants to preserve for a while their once terrible names. Surrounded by the whites with their arts of civilization, which by destroying the resources of the savage, doom them to weakness and decay. Well, again, the savages, it's pretty obvious, you know, who the savages were because they enslaved and, and kicked these people out and exterminated. And again, you're sold the pride of old glory and the flag. And what was that flag founded on? It was flat. It, it was founded on genocide. So, you know, pride, really, when you when you look at it, what are you proud of? Are you proud of the system? This system is is just horrible and it's oppressive and it's brutal. So how can we possibly be proud of the system? Well, maybe our system is a little less worse than others. Well, look at the track record again. The U.S. Uh, has been at more war than any other nation during the course of the U.S. history. Uh, you know, it's been used as the primary policing force of the control system, which, you know, intends on shooting itself over to China as the new headquarters. As long as we keep voting for the same system, we're going to get the same results. It's just total insanity. And see, it can happen here. It's better it's them, not you. It's better it's them and not you. That's what they're they're doing and look again to Washington's vision it's the same symbolism oh and you have an angel that's coming because the US is the only righteous co country uh, again uh, there's a bridge for sale in Brooklyn maybe some people will still buy right you know trying to make it out to be the US is the only worthy place you know it's 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 better than everything else and they really use that to pit us against each other you know down to our belief systems the belief system you know when i look at it and i study belief systems it is important to them the controllers as breathing oxygen they absolutely have to harness our belief system so when you're in a situation or you're trying to assess you know is somebody trying to manipulate me here you want to look around and you want to look at the fear factor and how that fear is going to move you in a certain direction and what is it going to sell you you know what because it, it, it is boils down to money as well but they are just doing everything they can and this is what they've done for so long is work on the belief systems and even when they were um, coming here and moving the tribes you know uprooting the tribes uh, to get them to go elsewhere you know they were selling it that that these people were horrible savages and this is what we need to do so it's the same control system in power and I, I think one of the 
uh, scarier things we could ever do is think that we're any different than the tribes that were here before us. We are no different to that control system. We're just a, a population for them to manipulate and control. And when they are able to uproot and move people, sickness sets in, disease sets in, weariness, exhaustion, you know, you don't know where to get your food, where, you know, how to, how to cook your food. You don't know what kind of weather you're going to come into. So it does slowly bring about decay, you know, of, of your being. And you can see that this is what they do. This is the game they play. And it's definitely behind the scenes. It's behind the scenes and these beings do not want to be observed. And that's why it's so important that they stay out of sight. This is all known, and, and we never endorse any one politician because from what we've seen, they all speak a good game, but then do they ever deliver? Do they ever deliver? Have things gotten better? Have bills, are they continuing to go up or are they continuing to go down? I've never seen my bills go down. I've never seen our taxes go down. I've never seen anyone say <clears throat> that they're in a place a position of control and then they make actually make something better you know actually do something that they say they will do no i mean i mean this is a mess so what what are we saying here today well my point that i want to get across is be self-sufficient stand on your own hold your own make sure you're not leaning into a system that's just going to pull the rug out from under you because that's what they have planned for a lot of people and it's really devastating and it's very sad in 1452, Pope Nicholas V issued a papal bull, Dom de Versas, which legitimized the slave trade, mm -hmm. at least as a result of war. And then in, in 1513, the Spanish requirement of 1513 was a declaration by the Spanish monarchy written by the Council of Castile jurist Juan Lopez de Palacios Rubios, of Castile's divinely ordained right to take possession of the territories of the New World, you know, the Western Hemisphere, and to subjugate, exploit, and when necessary, to fight the native inhabitants. The declaration was made on the behalf of Ferdinand II of Aragon and his daughter, the Queen Regent Joanna of Castile. The requerimiento was read to Native Americans in a language that they couldn't understand to inform them of Spain's rights to conquest. The Spaniards thus considered those who resisted as defying God's plan and so used Catholic theology to justify their conquest. In fact, they are even in writing, you can read accounts of it, where they notice that you know, a particular few of these girls were very beautiful, so they just took them. They just took them, and they brought them back on the ships to Europe to be their own personal slaves. It, doesn't that sound a lot like what we hear in, in, in Genesis 6? Doesn't that sound like what we you know, hear about the sons of God coming down and seeing the daughters of man were beautiful, and they took who they chose? This is the same system. This is their system. And, you know, again, people don't understand that if you are really uh, unknowingly worshiping these beings that live by slavery and blood what are you really worshiping mm -hmm. it's it's a fair question to ask yourself and a lot of people simply become complacent and they just do whatever the person is is doing in front of them they don't stop and think for themselves because that re would require a lot of self-sacrifice and understanding that everything you thought you knew is a total and complete lie and not many people can face that it's just the fact but don't worry they found nemo thank god nemo has been found and, and we can find peace and sanity but it's not going to be in a world run by this system this is again where we need to really awaken to the point where the people in the militaries and the policing uh, forces of, of the world no longer go along with the control system and instead, you know, literally throw their guns away and then we can actually have some change. Depend on yourself. Absolutely. And don't give in uh, to the prideful aspect of things because 
That's nothing but just pandering to ego. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.